Yeah, man, you need to just go ahead and uh, download Clip Studio Paint, man. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. It's literally a superior piece of software. Yeah, yeah, sure, man. Like, why would you pay a subscription fee to use Photoshop? Like, are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Like, you, you at least gotta be one of those three. No, you make some solid points, man. I, I think Joe would really enjoy Clip Studio Paint. What, 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 what are you talking about? Like, like who's Joe? Joe Mama. I, I, I don't know where that came from, man. That, that, that was, that was definitely uncalled for. Like, my, my mom's name isn't even Joe. Get the heck out of here. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, buddy. Yeah, superior piece of software, my, You've uh... got mail. Is that AOL? Who the heck still has an AOL account? I, I don't have an AOL account. Do I? As an avid Photoshop user and Adobe fanboy, I've decided to try Clip Studio Paint out of sheer curiosity. Stop the cap! And I've also decided to create this setup and dynamic post tutorial for absolute beginners. You're welcome. First, go to clipstudio.net so you can install Clip Studio Paint. Now, if you're balling like stalling, you can outright buy Clip Studio Paint Pro for $49.99 or Clip Studio Paint X for $219. You can also start a free trial. I'm gonna leave that up to you though. You may also be required to make an account, which is especially true if you decide to buy them because you have to register your, your code or something like that. Just, just check your email for it. Okay, I downloaded it. Now I just clicked on the download and I'm gonna install it. And you already know what that is. It's just just hit the next button without actually reading anything until it stops showing you information. No, no I'm just playing. Just uh, re read the instructions. Yeah. Once you have the Clip Studio app installed, go ahead and open it up. And once you have the app open, you want to go to your left and click on Paint. This is the actual drawing software. To create a brand spanking new file for you to draw all your beautiful art in, you're going to want to go to File, then New. As you can see, there are a bunch of different projects you can start, you know, like a webtoon, comic, print, yada, 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 animation, and all that stuff. However, we're going to stick to illustration, all right? So this is where we're going to set the size of our canvas. I'm going to set mine to 4K. Feel free to set yours to whatever you like. 16-bit uh, if, if you want to do that i don't know how and 4k is 3840 by 2160 so i'm gonna set it like that and you can set your resolution to 300 which is like a pretty standard number just keep in mind the higher the resolution the bigger the file size and you don't want to make your file too big when you don't have to now we're gonna press ok and our canvas is created okay so by default your your workspace is gonna look like absolute mess so um we're gonna fix that all you gotta do is drag and drop these unnecessary menus out like this and then just make them disappear like uh tupac you know because tupac is in cuba it's not dead so sub view we just x that out item bank we don't really need that information don't really need that we can x that out i'm gonna leave my navigator because it just allows you to see your illustration as a whole whenever you're zoomed in i'm gonna leave layer property search layer i'm just gonna x that out animation cells i'm gonna get rid of that we're not doing any animation stuff layers I'm gonna keep that history you may find this important if um you want to go back to like a certain stage of your drawing auto action we're gonna get rid of that drag and drop and exit out and there are a bunch of other menus right here that you can you know feel free to drag and drop and x them out like this tool property x that out and i'm just gonna keep my brushes up like this you can also place your menus in any spot you want them to be it's like this uh color wheel here so i like to have my color wheel over here to the left i just drag and drop it right above the layers like this you can also shrink the menus down like this you know if you want some more real estate and we got a bunch of other menus over here that we don't really need all this stuff so i'm just gonna leave that as well okay so our workspace is a lot cleaner now it's oxy clean so to say this workspace which doesn't look like absolute trash we're gonna go to window and we're gonna go to workspace and we're going to click on register workspace and you can just name this whatever you want i'm just gonna call it a uh, drawing canvas or something like that hit okay and now if we go back to window workspace you'll see it right here now for some reason if this workspace goes back to default we can just go to window and then choose the uh the one that we created okay so now we got clip studio the way we want to look it's time to start drawing some poses and start drawing poses we need to gather some images for reference so if you want to avoid looking like an absolute donut in public you can just go to your favorite search engine and find some cool images to use as reference 
or you can go to the dedicated website for references like figurosity or quick pose now if you want your reference to be in close proximity with your canvas and you want to be able to like look at it you know, easily while you're drawing all you do is just go to window canvas and then new window now we have two canvases and just click and drag one off of that little bar right there now we can make this thing any size that we want and just place it anywhere we want so maybe in the bottom right because that's where nothing really is after downloading the reference that you want you just want to click on the little window you created here go to file then open let's choose the image you downloaded and click on open and look at that we have a reference that we can use and we can move it anywhere place it anywhere we want and of course you can kind of zoom in like this so you can get a better look at it hey, i would say you don't want to do all that what you can do is add a 3d model for you know drawing poses which uh, clip studio offers so to add a 3d model we're going to go to window material and then we're going to choose material body type and now to my right you can see a bunch of different um, models that we can drag and drop into the canvas so let's say if you want just like uh, this male model right here you can just drag it click and drag it then just drop it inside of here and look at that we have a 3d model that we can use and pose any way we want up top you can see there are a bunch of different functions that we can use to um you know position the model and the camera so this right here is to rotate the camera you know left and right and up and down so we can change the perspective this right here is to translate the camera left and right up and down this is for zooming in and out this is for moving our actual material or model you know in space up and down left and right yada 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 this right here is for rotating our 3d model this right here is just for rotating it on this axis this is for rotating it on the uh, y axis so it allows us to spin our character around without you know actually translating it anyway and this last one is to just like freely move it anywhere in space x y z all three dimensions and now what about the poses how do we pose this thing so as you can see as i move my mouse along this uh figure here i can click on a certain part of the body and then click on those little dots and then this little gizmo will appear so i can click and drag this dot so i can move the figure just like this and i can click on these different axes of the gizmo and rotate the character so like he's he's doing the, the harlem shake right now so let's say if i wanted to rotate the head i can just click on the head and it's rotated on this axis or this axis or this axis and same thing for the legs just click on the quadriceps for instance and we just move it up like this and you can move it to the side like that now let's say if we wanted to bend the knee right we could just move the leg like this click on the calf and then move it down this axis right right here there are a bunch of different parts that are movable so i just recommend you get in there and just start playing around with it, it takes some getting used to but the more you do it you know the better you'll get at it okay so after fiddling around with the 3d model let's just say that this is the pose that you want to draw so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this tab off of this little bar right here zoom out on the image and place it here resize it a bit place it over here in the corner uh, go to file new keep all the same settings for illustration okay uh, drag this into the big window and then we're just gonna zoom in like this and we're ready to start drawing i uh, order to choose your brush you made to open up window and sub tool brush i have a bunch of imported brushes over here just choose a default brush and to activate your brush you're gonna hit b on your keyboard now we can just start drawing so first off i'm gonna draw a circle to represent the head so it's gonna be a rough circle look something like this then i'm gonna capture the angle of the head so i'm gonna draw a curve it looks like that and then i'm gonna draw a curve it looks like this so it looks like it's looking off to the side and downwards now i gotta draw on the neck which goes all the way to the rib cage. Now I'll draw in the clavicles, which are sort of angled this way. Next, I'm gonna draw in a silhouette for the shoulders, but like a curve, just like this. Now I'm gonna draw in the thoracic region of the body, which is basically the rib cage. That looks like a, a curve, just like that. Now I'm gonna draw in the stretch on this side, which stretches out and curves in. And you can kind of draw in this part of the pelvis right here, but like a little curve like that. Now I'll draw in the line of action, which goes all the way down past this part right here now we're gonna draw on a curve that represents the abdomen then we're gonna finish it off by drawing the rest of the pelvis now the crotch is going to look something like this so we're gonna draw a curve right here and we're going to draw another curve like that and we're just going to draw a line to represent the pelvis right here now it's time to draw the arms and legs so our first leg is going to be angled this way draw another curve like that now close it off draw on some lines to 
to represent the joints. Then we're gonna draw in the calf, which is sort of angled like this. Draw the outside as well. And it pinches at the bottom like that. I'm gonna bring this part in because I think I feel like it should be like a little smaller. So I'm gonna erase that and make that part a little smaller like that. And redraw this. And we can draw our leg now. So we're drawing in that quad. Draw in this other curve on this side. And then we're gonna close it off. Draw in some lines to represent the joints. And the calf is angled this way. I draw it in like that. Next up is the feet. So the feet are just gonna be simple little shapes like that. And then we're just gonna draw in the other foot like that. So next up is the arm. So we're gonna draw in like a little oval to represent our rib cage here, like a little egg shape. And then we're gonna draw in. Then we're gonna draw in some circles for the shoulders like this. And the upper arm is sort of angled in this manner. Keep in mind the upper arm should be like the roughly the same size as your rib cage right here. And we're gonna draw in a curve like that. Close the upper arm like so draw in line to represent the joint and the forearm is going to be angled like this and we're gonna curve it out like that and then curve it back in same thing on this side so we're gonna draw in the upper arm and we're gonna draw in the other side close it off draw a line to represent the joint draw in the forearm like this and there we go next we're gonna draw in the hands it's just gonna be something simple so it kind of goes out like that and we have the finger here and it kind of goes in then we have the thumb right here so we're gonna draw curve and thumb is going to look something like that i draw in the other hand face this part a bit draw on the thumb and the overall shape of the hand is going to look like this okay there we go and if you like you can also just complete the face like this by drawing in some curves represent the you know the entire head uh, just like that all right and there we go so that's our pose okay so our spectacular pose is done now it's time to save and export it so we can share it on a bunch of social media platforms like myspace and you know the other non-relevant ones irrelevant huh. So to do that we're gonna go to the file save as and you can just save it to any location you want i'm going to save it as a png i leave the name as illustration hit save now all it's left is to navigate to your favorite social media site and post your piece of art and just watch the likes and comments roll in approximately 10 hours later all right so i finally got a comment let's check this out huh. Uh, all right so ladies and gentlemen that's the end of the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something from it now feel free to leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss a single interman classic check out the description for some cool links you'll find a lot of cool stuff down there and uh yeah that's all i got for you guys today this is interman from interman arts signing off